Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. Well, I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was younger, I always did it for a half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. The Christian faith asks, even demands us to believe many things that are quite frankly impossible. In fact, the Christian faith is predicated upon belief in the impossible. For example, we all know beyond a shadow of a doubt that dead folks stay dead, period, unless they don't. Another impossible thing Christians believe is that God wants to be in relationship with us. In fact, God wants to be intimate with us. St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the fathers of the church, teaches that part of what it means to be created in the image of God means that we're created for friendship with God. And of course, this friendship includes children and youth too. Friendship is a complicated thing. To be friends with someone is to know them with a much greater degree of intimacy than we know most of the people we see every day. But no matter how well we know another person, there's always much that remains unknown. The other person always remains somewhat of a mystery to us. And this is a good thing. In this place of mystery, I can not only be myself, but I can actually discover myself. Friendship is not something that we can control. Instead, it's more of an adventure that we enter into. An adventure that will likely shape the very essence of who we are. And how do we become friends with someone? Well, one of the answers is time. And some of this time is active time spent doing things, playing games, talking, hiking, eating. But sometimes friends are just the folks that we do life with, often by simply being together. So how do we become friends with God? How do we enter into a life transforming adventure with the Lord of the universe? Again, the answer is time. And this time includes doing things, worship, Bible study, service, and of course, prayer. And when we think of teaching children to pray, I think overall we do a pretty good job at teaching them intercessory prayer, table blessings, bedtime prayers, and liturgical prayers. In other words, we do a pretty good job at teaching children how to talk to God, how to do prayer. But friendship can't be all about one person talking and the other person listening. We also need to teach children how to simply be present with God and to listen both for and to God. And so why don't we teach children how to be with God and to listen to God? Mostly, I think it's because as adults, we're uncomfortable with silence, and often we're uncomfortable with God. We don't know how to be with one another, let alone how to be with God, without filling up the space with noise. Well, imaginative prayer can allow us to fill up that space with wonder instead of with noise. Now, using the language of imaginative, I need to make a distinction, a careful distinction, between imaginative and imaginary. Imaginary, of course, means something that's not real. It's not there. It's something that's just made up. And, of course, the creation of the imaginary is an act of the imagination. But the imagination helps us to do much, much more than just make things up. It's the imagination which makes it possible for us to see what's real, even if and even when it's not that which is most apparent. In fact, it's the imagination that makes believing impossible things possible, not because they're not true, but because they cannot be easily seen. So again, Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. Well, I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was younger, I always did it for a half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. 
By using our imaginations in prayer, we open ourselves up to the mystery that is God, and we make possible the seemingly impossible reality of friendship with God.